Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Gruul Aggro. Welcome back, everybody, to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing really, really well. Just a quick reminder, only a couple days left for our Dominaria United giveaway. If you are interested in getting a free draft booster box of the brand new set, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Discord if you would like extra entries. I do wish you all the best of luck. Uh, that announcement will be coming this Friday on the 16th, so just a heads up there. Uh, but let's talk about today's deck a little bit. It's Gruul Aggro. We're going pretty simple today. Uh, this original list is brought to you by Hello Good Game. I did make just a very small tweak uh, to include Kodama of the West Tree here. Uh, this has a modified sub-theme, as you might be able to tell, and so adding uh, Kodama just allows you to ramp and kind of take a little bit more advantage out of that. It also gives you reach, which is a really important piece to the puzzle in my opinion, because there are a lot of flyers, a lot of things you have to consider. So uh, all that to say, this deck is very aggressive as you can probably tell. Uh, we do have the etching. We also have Phoenix Chick, uh, which has flying and haste. It can't block, uh, but whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you can pay two red if you do return it from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking with a 1-1 counter on it. So uh, again, that modified sub-theme really popping through here to safekeeping just to keep everything safe. <laughs> uh, we have, that was a bad joke, uh, the Yavamaya uh, Iconoclast, uh, which if we can kick this will come into play with a 1-1 one, one count. Uh, it gets plus one, plus one in haste, excuse me. It's not a 1-1 one, one counter. Uh, ideally, we can get some counters on it with things like the etching or uh, the partners up here. Uh, Query and Beast Call are one of the best two drops right now in green, in my opinion. Uh, definitely going to eat removal spells pretty quickly uh, if if they uh, if they can remove it. Uh, but definitely a powerhouse card for us. Uh, Rada's Firebrand also quite good for us. Good value, three one for two. Uh, so just very very powerful. Lightning Strike, of course, uh, one of the best uh, most efficient removal pieces right now, uh, just for three damage. Uh, Reckless Stormseeker, of course, gives us haste, allows us to attack in a little bit faster. Uh, a one of Squee, uh, which has haste on its own. Uh, kind of an interesting one. When it attacks, you create a 1-1 one, one red goblin token that's tapped and attacking. And then you can actually cast this from your graveyard by paying four and exiling four other cards from your graveyard rather than paying its mana cost. So again, between the uh, Squee and the Phoenix Chick, we get a little bit of replayability out of this, which is quite nice. Uh, kind of already talked about Kodama, just gives us the extra land drops essentially, uh, but more importantly it's actually deck thinning for us, so it gives our top decks a lot more power. Uh, and then of course partners, the the Helena and Elena, Elena? Uh, <laughs> allowing us to throw some counters around and really take advantage of the modified piece to this. Uh, and again, reach and first strike, very good here. So uh, all in all, gonna be an interesting one. Hello good game, thank you so much for throwing the original list together. I just noticed this is in the sideboard. We're going to take that out. Uh, interesting. Hello, good game. Must have uh, thrown that in there. Anyway, this is going to be a fun one, guys. I do really think uh, Gruul Aggro is pretty solid right now. I'm kind of curious to see how this goes. Haven't played this deck at all, uh, so it's going to be a brand new experience for everybody. So let's give it a shot, guys. Let's see how we do. All right, guys. Here we are for game number one. Uh, this is definitely a keep. Uh, we've got the a lot of these, actually, but I think that's going to work out in our favor. So let's go ahead. We'll pay one to get one of these down now. Uh, and then next turn, what we're able to do is actually Beast Collar, uh, which will immediately come into play with a 1-1 counter on it, thanks to this, and hopefully give us a little bit more of a powerhouse play. So uh, we'll see. All right. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Could also do just the Iron Class, but or Iconoclast or whatever, but I think we're going to go Quirion uh, Beast Caller here. Again, it enters the battlefield with that 1-1 counter, so if this sticks onto the battlefield long enough, uh, we're able to distribute that 1-1 counter around elsewhere, and that gives us a little extra we can do. Uh, we also, again, that Iconoclast coming in play next turn is going to be really nice for us. Alright, um... So... I mean... They can evolve this up, um, but I think what we're going to end up doing is just throw this out. Uh, this is going to throw a 1-1 counter here. 
That also is going to give plus one, plus one in haste. So now, while they will take something out here, uh, this is obviously quite a bit of damage, so they're going to have to make a call. Okay, sure. Uh, what's nice about this is they're investing quite a lot of mana into this, uh, which is perfectly fine by me. Um, let's see. I think we want to do one on each, actually. Uh, so the reason being, we get out of range of cutdown, uh, which I think is pretty important for us. We're also out of range already of Meat Hook Massacre, uh, so like neither one of these dies this turn if all they have is a Meat Hook. So I think that's probably just the smartest play. Uh, yeah, this is very good. So let's do this. Uh, we will go ahead and throw this out, kicked, so we can get in for some extra damage. Uh, I mean, you gotta admit, that's a lot of damage, and there we go, we got the win, guys. What a quick game. Uh, couldn't have drawn it up any better. That was absolutely perfect. Let's jump into game two. This month's Patreon rewards feature some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash itresolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. A little bit of a slower start, uh, for sure, but... I'm going to try it. We'll see if it works out. Uh, we'll lead with the Carplusion Forest here, uh, just to make sure we've got that red available, of course. Um, but now, I think we'll just go Beast Collar. Uh, looks like it's going to be the Enchantments deck, potentially. No, it's just a ramp deck. Interesting. Okay. Uh, with this in mind, do we just want to kill this right away? I think so. Um, not really interested in letting that stick around. Uh, knowing that they have, uh, that ramp is probably going to be important for them, I think it's pretty crucial that we just get that off the field now. Um, cool. And this will be, I think, a very reasonable turn for us. So do we just want to go for the Squee, or do we want to go for the Beast Collar plus Rada? Um, I'm going to go Beast Collar and Rada. I don't know that this is correct, but seems pretty good to me. Uh, it really throws up out those counters very quickly, and so now if one of these dies, we get to distribute these elsewhere. Uh, and with Rada's Firebrand on the field, that's actually quite good. We'll see. Um, again, removal is probably not going to be high on this list. Let's see. It's a creature or planeswalker card. I have not played against a Johnny yet, so this is actually brand new to me. Um, I'm gonna say no blocks, that's fine. Not overly concerned about that. Land is very good. Um, so, we get to throw some of these around. Um, let's see. So that actually keeps that from blocking, uh, which is quite good. I honestly just think we go here. I don't even think we worry too much about a Johnny. Uh, we'll, we'll throw that there just to see what happens. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> they just gave up. Uh, awesome. Uh, man, so far so good. This deck is killing it, guys. Let's jump into a game three. We might have some time for some extra ones. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, I think we definitely keep this. It's not as exciting, uh, but we do have the etching into the Firebrand into a second Firebrand with Tamiyo's safekeeping available. So, I mean, this is a nice little curve. It's just, it's a little less aggressive uh, than maybe we've seen in the last two. Um, regardless, I think, you know, it's a perfectly reasonable start and we'll see what the opponent's up to. Uh, interesting. I do like the Beast Collar draw. So what this opens up is, of course, again, we throw the Beast Collar down. It gets a 1-1 counter immediately, thanks to the etching. Uh, and then that way, it, it sets us up quite nicely for future turns. Um, and I think I will go for this now. We'll see. I mean, this is looking like potentially a mono blue deck, uh, which is going to be a bit scary if I had to assume. Um, nope, Azorius. Okay, uh, so this is going to be the Virtuoso deck, sure. Uh, definitely a scary deck, no doubt about it, um, but uh, we do have some solutions to this problem. <laughs> Whether we get them or not, we'll see. Um, 
So I actually think the play, uh, we're gonna run as Firebrand just to get a counter here first. Um, and I think we attack in. We have the safekeeping up at this point. Um, and so I'm kind of curious to see what they actually do. Are they just gonna take this? I have to imagine they've got like a phase out, slip out the back. Sure, okay. <clears throat> so that just phases out, which means no damage is done to the Beast Collar. That is fine. Okay, excellent. That worked out okay. Uh, we got some damage in, obviously wasted a slip out, not wasted, but we, uh, we kind of took a slip out the back out of hand, which I think is very good. And we got to leave up the safekeeping this turn, which I think is very good. Um, sure. Not going to do anything about that, obviously. Um, the fact that this is conniving so much is a little scary because now we can't force it to not block, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, I think we take this. As much as I don't want to, um, I do think this is probably just the right play. They just get to connive so much, um, and it deals extra damage with each of these. That's so scary. Uh, yeah. I mean, not a ton we can do. We're just gonna have to let it happen. Take five. They've got one blue left. Very curious as to what that might be. They discarded a Spell Pierce. Ooh, good call for them to discard the Courage. That's very good. Okay. Um, let's play the Forest. Uh, let's play the Squee. It's just going to maximize, I think, the damage output as best we can. Um... I think we're gonna need to leave probably two things available to block here. Just in case they have a bounce spell. Um, I think that's gonna be the best. Let's go ahead and get Squee in as well as the Beast Caller here. Um, and then again, we do have the safekeeping available. So basically we're just trying to ping away a little bit here uh, to get it to where we can attack for lethal next turn. Um, they're gonna have to consider attacking or not attacking based on how much damage we can do. So, um, they may be thinking, hey, I can potentially win the game, and that's fine. Um, but we do have the safekeeping to gain us a couple points, uh, which currently would get us out of range, but I'm sure they can do more than that. Yeah. That's fine. Um, truthfully, as long as they don't, like outwardly kill a bunch of our stuff. I don't really care. Okay. Um, yeah. Can we not block this? We can't block this? Is that... Uh, I totally can't be blocked. Oh, forgot about that. Um, all right. Well, then we definitely should have attacked. Uh, totally forgot about security bypass. Uh, that was very, very good on the opponents and 100% my mistake totally forgot about that. I can't believe it. Uh, it just means that basically if it's the only creature attacking, it can't be blocked, which is super good. So definitely a mistake on my end. We could have played around that a little better. I don't actually think it would have mattered, to be honest. Um, that's We didn't have a way to remove it, you know what I mean? So that's okay. Let's go ahead and jump into a game four. All right, guys, here we are for game number four. A uh, bit of an interesting hand, but I will try it. I would really love this to just be a red source, <laughs> uh, just so we can get the curve from one into two. Um, but that being said, this is still a very impactful hand. Any land gets a Storm Seeker. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and play Rado's Firebrand, um, and we'll see if they have a way of dealing with that. They could have a cut down here, um, which I assume they do. Um, but we'll see. Definitely a red focused hand and unfortunately only have one red uh, mana, which is a little not great, but it's fine. All right, let's uh, drop that Storm Seeker. This is just gonna give us the maximum amount of potential damage right away. Uh, it also helps future turns if they can't deal with it. I'm sure they can. This is a mono black deck, it looks like. Um, yeah, there's that cut down. 
I knew they had one. <laughs> uh, interesting. Uh, I'm trying to think what the best play is here. I really don't know. I think we just keep this going. And if they can deal with it, they can deal with it. I assume they have like a lily at some point. Looks like Infernal Grass. Okay. I have to imagine they've got a lily. Okay. Very good. Uh, what's kind of nice here is I don't mind discarding the chick uh, to, to deal with this. So I'm actually going to. Uh, yep. That's fine. I just need to get that off the field before they can start attacking in and doing a lot more with it. Um, I'm going to try and just uh, kick her this and see if we can get some damage in. Looks like we can. That's helpful. Yeah, sure. We'll see. We're doing okay considering, but I have to imagine their top decks are going to be significantly better than ours. Um, so I don't anticipate this going our way overall, but so far it's been meaningful uh let's let's go for the etching right now uh what i'm kind of trying to do is avoid just dying to like an invoke despair uh which is a distinct possibility at some point so uh we'll see they're gonna make a sack sure so now just a haste creature would be nice um but it looks like that's not gonna be the case uh that is a sol problem solver though so let's go ahead and drop this that solves that problem, uh, which is great. We get the Rada's Firebrand down. This is out of cut down range, which is great as well. Uh, and hopefully they just don't have a ton. Okay, they get our partners out of hand, which is very good um, for them. But we're about to get in for quite a bit of damage. Uh, yeah. We'll activate this, steal as much damage as we can. That can't block now and we win. There we go. That was it, guys. That was awesome. Uh, so three out of four games. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys. I'm cutting this one a little bit short because, I mean, it is an aggro-y deck. Uh, like, we kind of know the play patterns. It's more of just seeing how it fits into the meta. And right now, I mean, it was pretty good. Uh, we didn't really get to see the modified piece take shape. Uh, only from the standpoint of, you know, Kodama's in there for that potential, like, capitalizing on the modified ability. Um, while we definitely modified our creatures, uh, we didn't necessarily get to do that piece of it. But I think that's more of a long-term plan, that's more of a backup plan, and just a long-term, like, let's make sure our deck is as optimal as it can be. Um, and so for me, I'm not that uh, I'm not that upset that we didn't get to see that. Uh, overall, I think the deck did extraordinarily well. Um, hyper hyper aggressive uh that rada's firebrand that last turn there getting to pump it up making sure that the creature can't block and then being able to just deal eight points of damage right off the bat uh that's pretty good that's a lot of damage uh and that was against mono black so uh i have to imagine this deck is relatively well positioned now do i think it's better than a lot of the like mono black decks things like that probably not um i think those decks have the tools to deal with it our opponent got a little unlucky and we got pretty lucky, uh, but I think that's part of the game too, so I'd, I'm not that upset by that. Uh, regardless, this was a blast. Uh, hello, good game again. Thank you so much for putting the initial list together. I did, like I said, make just a couple of tweaks, nothing too crazy, uh, but I absolutely love this one. This was an absolute blast, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Again, guys, that Dominaria United giveaway is ending in just a couple days, so I encourage you to check that out. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, but guys, thank you. I really do appreciate everything everybody watching and supporting the channel. It's been an absolute blast with this new rotation. I love you guys. Have a fantastic day.